What's up guys, I'm going to unbox and review the new TP-Link Deco BE68. It's a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system designed to increase your Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. So I'm going to do my full on speed test range test using my following Wi-Fi 7 devices. I also happen to have the iPhone 16 Pro Max which is a Wi-Fi 7 device. However, this Wi-Fi 7 device can't go as fast as these two and I made a separate video showing you guys the speed differences between that. So we got the three pack here. You can get, it comes in a two pack or a one pack. It's very similar to the Deco BE63 or the B65, at least that's what it looks like. WPS button, we got a gigabit port, a 2.5 gigabit port, and a 10 gigabit port. We got a USB 3.0 if you want to share your hard drive. Don't expect fast speeds from that, but it is possible. We got the power port, and on the bottom we have the little factory reset that you would put a pin inside. We got some vents on the bottom and some vents on the top. And the other two units are actually identical. So all three of these are actually routers. However, the main one that's hooked up to your modem is the one acting as the router. We got the power adapter. It is 100 to 240 volts and the output is 39.6 watts. And it comes with a CAT6 Ethernet cable and a quick installation guide and a reset tool in case you need to do a factory reset. So I used this thing for about a week. I ran it as my main mesh system. I set it up, no drop, something like that. Super easy to set up. We'll get into the Deco app in a little bit. In that time, I had a chance to do all my speed test range tests. I have all those numbers right here. We'll get into that momentarily. But I did want to say I, w I was expecting this to be really good. And the reason for that is I've tested the Deco B63. I mean, I've tested most of the Decos. But I tested the B63, and that's one of my favorite mesh systems for up to 2.5 gigabit internet speeds because of its price. For such a an affordable price, it's giving very good performance as Wi-Fi 7. So when I saw this, I was really happy that TP-Link basically sent this to me so I could test it out and it is very, very good. And this is basically the better version of the B63. It has the higher speed rating. It does have one faster 10 gigabit port. I was hoping there'd be at least two 10 gig ports that would actually make it a lot better. Uh, but generally speaking, it is basically the better faster version of the B63. All right, so let's jump into the internet speed test. So as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless of course the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, it's a, a little bit different because my internet speeds are five gigs up and down, and this supports up to 10 gig inter internet speeds. So I could plug into this at five gigs, so it could take five gigs, but as soon as I come out to an ethernet connected device, I now cap my speeds to 2.5 gigabits. So when I do a speed test on my computer, I'm actually being capped to 2.5 gigabit speeds. And that's, my computer can handle up to 10 gig speed, so it's not my computer, it's actually this port that's limiting it. So if this was at least a five gigabit port, I would be able to get my five gig speeds, but because it's 2.5, it's actually capping it to 2.5 gigabit speeds. Anyways, oh, by the way, I put my own main sticker on this. I test a lot of mesh systems, so I need a way of remembering which one is the main one. And with the Deco, you could pick any one as the main one, but I just happened to pick this one. And so if I were to retest it later, I know that this I set this up as the main one, and that's the one I would continue basically connecting. So looking at the Wi-Fi results, this is one of those rare cases where I actually get faster over Wi-Fi than I do over Ethernet. And you can see that I got over 3.7 gigabits per second download and not quite as fast on the upload 1.7, but still pretty fast. But the download and the, was very, very fast, faster than what I got over Ethernet. And again, the reason being is at this source, this router is actually still having five gig Internet. So when I Wi-Fi to it, I have access to that full five gigs and the Wi-Fi device can only go so fast. Now to find the true performance of this mesh system, I need to do a local speed test server where I make my computer to the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And in the case of wired or wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. So this way I'm no longer relying on my internet service provider, my ISP or the public speed test server. Now, this is another special case for this mesh system because this is a question that I get asked. Um, not super common, but I, did, I do get asked this every now and then. And the question is really, because these are auto sensing ports, if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, can you use this 2.5 gigabit port as your internet source and use the 10 gig as your LAN? And the answer is yes. In fact, that's probably what I would actually do. 
If you have internet speeds of up to 2.5, I would actually use the 2.5 port and not the 10 port. And the 10 port, you can actually wire backhaul to another 10 gig and you can get a full 10 gig LAN. Now that doesn't mean your internet speed is going to get faster. Your internet speed is still capped to your internet speeds or this port. But your LAN, so if you have like a NAS or if you have two computers talking to each other or if you're doing LAN gaming, local area network gaming, so those can actually talk to each other at faster rates, especially if you have a 10 gigabit switch. That also can make a difference. So I happen to have a 10 gigabit switch. I've reviewed a few of them as well. But basically, I would go from this 10 gig to a 10 gig switch, and then from that 10 gig switch, I'd go to a few devices, and then I would connect to this other 10 gig, and that would make for a very fast wired backhaul network. But I didn't actually test it that way. I actually tested it the normal way where my 10 gig, because my internet speeds are at five, I have to use this 10 gig port basically. That's more advantageous for me is to use the 10 gig port. I don't have to, but it's more advantageous uh, for me to do that because for Wi-Fi devices, I can actually go faster than 2.5 if I'm near this, uh, this main one. So I actually tested it with the 2.5 gigabit port and that's why you could see across the board, the single router configuration just capped to just under uh, gigabit, 2.5 gigabit speeds, both for the download and the upload. The wired backhaul is pretty much the same thing. And the wireless backhaul, this was the most impressive part. Normally, wireless backhaul, that's what you're paying extra for. Not always, but that's one of the main features that more expensive mesh systems offer. So when you see a mesh system with a higher speed rating, that usually means they're gonna have faster wireless backhaul speeds. And this is very evident that I almost got, not quite, it's still faster over Ethernet, but you know, I got over 2.2, close to 2.3 gigabits on the download, not quite, and a little above 2.1 gigabits on the upload. And my other video where I actually do a wireless backhaul test uh, connecting to this via Wi-Fi with my Mac Mini, and this is the wireless backhaul node, and then I do another speed test where I actually Ethernet to a wireless backhaul node. And the results are, phenomenal. I highly, highly, highly recommend checking out that video because I'm actually running a speed test right in front of you guys. You could see it in the video and stuff. So it's, it's, it's like just very cool just to see those numbers and how fast this thing can actually go. Next we get into range test. Now range will vary drastically by location. Drastically. So the more obstructions there are, the less range you're typically going to get. The more of an open area you're in, the more range you're typically going to get. So if you're in between floors, thick walls, all that stuff, that's all typically going to reduce your range. So at 20 feet away, we could see that it doesn't look like the speeds dropped at all. Now, in reality, it probably would drop, but just because the ethernet port was actually capping the speeds, it appears like it didn't drop. Uh, so we pretty much got very similar speeds 20 feet away as I was literally right next to the router. So that's why it's showing that. If I was using the 10 gig ports, most likely would see some sort of a drop. But it just goes to show you that the Wi-Fi on this thing is very, very powerful. At 50 feet away, this is when the real drop starts to happen, but still very, very fast speeds. 2.3 gigabits per second download is incredibly fast. The upload is usually drops more at 1.3. And then at 100 feet, this is when I'm across the street, 949 down and 413 up. I can actually go further. I just capped my testing at 100 feet. Now for setup configuration, use the Deco app. And even though the Deco is off, I actually have access to it right here. So I'm just gonna use it just for reference. So basically, when you're first setting this thing up, it kind of walks you through what you need to do just to get a basic setup working. Now, if you guys want to know the different ways of connecting it, what you can do, what you can't do, I actually have separate videos on various decos that I show you guys what you can do, how you can expand your ethernet ports, what, you know, using a switch, the various ways of connecting wired and wireless backhaul, what your options are. So I'll link that below if you guys are interested. So, but basically in this configuration, I have uh, one wired, one wireless, I have a whole bunch of clients. And if you have smart home devices, it will actually show up here if they're by TP-Link. I should mention that because I actually have a bunch of smart home devices like smart switches, smart plugs and stuff, and they actually show up right here and I can actually control them if I want to. And then we go to the security tab and the security tab, 
This is when it looks for issues and stuff and you can have a block list mode. You can do device isolation if you wanted to. So if you want to have some IoT devices uh, isolated from the network, but just so it has access to the inter internet, you can actually do that. And something new that I hadn't noticed was the camera security is they have this home mode where you could basically add certain cameras that if you're in the home mode, it actually disables the cameras, which is kind of cool. I didn't realize they had that. Um, now the camera might also have that separately, but it looks like that is an option here. And then you get parental controls and you could basically block devices and then you can actually filter on stuff like block websites. You can actually do web filter on different types of content. And then you could set a bedtime. Now there are more advanced parental controls, but that does require a separate subscription. And even some of the, the bedtimes and stuff, if you want to do weekdays and weekends and custom times and stuff, that actually requires a separate subscription, just like some of the other stuff here, like Safe Search, like YouTube Restricted, Blocked Apps, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, so next we get into the more, and this is basically your Wi-Fi settings. So your Wi-Fi settings, you get three main Wi-Fi's kind of. Uh, and the reason why I say kind of is because they, they all, you only really need one of them enabled. So you get your main 2.4 and 5, and that you can't separate out the 2.4 and 5. You can disable the 2.4 and just have a 5, or disable the 5 and just have a 2.4, but you can't have a separate 2.4 and 5, at least as of now. And so that creates one network, and then the 6 gigahertz is a separate network, and in fact, that's what I did all my testing on. All the stuff was done on that. And then you could make an MLO network, which is multi-link operation. So if you have Wi-Fi 7 devices like the iPhone, which is not quite as fast as these, uh, as the OnePlus 13 or the Galaxy that I have. Uh, but, but with Wi-Fi 7 devices, they actually have the ability to connect to more than one band at the same time. And the MLO network would allow that. Now, from testing the MLO network and the 6 gigahertz band, it looks like the 6 gigahertz band was just as fast, so I just connected to that. And so I just left the MLO off. Uh, and the 6 gigahertz band, only Wi-Fi 6E devices can see it and Wi-Fi 7 devices. So if it's a Wi-Fi 6 device, it won't see that because it, it doesn't support the 6 gigahertz band. Then you can make a separate guest network. So 2.4 and 5, or you can make a 6, or you can make both. And then you can even make an Internet of Things Wi-Fi. So if you wanted to do that, uh, where all your IoT devices connect to that Wi-Fi, you can do that as well. WPS, QoS, if you want to do that. Uh, network optimization when it's running. You could set up VPN if you wanted to. And then you could go to the advanced section. And over here, you can run the operation. Basically, you can run the router in access point mode, or you can run it in router mode. Now, typically, you want to run this in router mode because this happens to be a really good system, and you want your better router to be your main one. Now you can run an access point mode, let's say if you have a Wi-Fi router combo and you want to have that enabled, then you can technically run this in access point mode that way. Uh, but again, typically you want your best router to be your main one. And then you get a whole bunch of other options here, DHCP, wireless network mode, USB sharing, fast roaming, and USB sharing is if you want to basically back up, like if you want to put a, a hard drive here and back it up on your network, don't expect it to be fast. Uh, but that is an option that you can do and you can also control your LED lights basically so you can have the because there's a like a little LED light that goes on right here that tells you if it's on or off or if it's having trouble connecting and stuff and you can actually uh, disable that if you want to and then you can update your firmware and all that other stuff basically. So who is this mesh system for? Well I would say if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits this is one of the best choices you can get and based on performance that's kind of what i'm focused on because performance wise this thing is phenomenal the only thing that it's achilles heel is that it only has one super fast 10 gig port if i had two super fast 10 gig ports and that would be amazing but because it only has one fast 2.5 uh, one fast 10 gig port again in my case i go in at five i come out at 2.5 so for me, I would need something more powerful like the BE85 or the BE95 or something like that. Um, and in this case, yeah, internet speeds of up to 2.5, this thing is solid, very fast, very good range, and incredibly good wireless backhaul speed. So 
With that, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button if you guys enjoyed this video, share the video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Are you guys planning on getting one of these? And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. By the way, there's a lot more router videos coming along. A lot more. I literally have several stacked up that I'm... A lot more are coming. <laughs> Let's just say that. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.